Hello, so in this one let's do a physical session slash thorn explosion critical and stunner build. This one is not bad, especially if you can stack equip weapon range, your session slash can become really huge and basically clear your wall screen. And thorn explosion is basically gonna be your main single target damage if you awaken it to source. So yeah, let's get into it. Skill board should look something like this. Let's start with the crescent slash. Basically, everything that goes from the trigger room is priority clockwise, so additional physical damage would be the main one, then confidence, quick attack, savagery, fine weakness, and on thorn explosion it's additional physical damage, area effect, fine weakness, slaughter, elite slayer, instead of using elite slayer you can use acceleration or preserve mana, depending on which utility do you need. Just remember, you don't need to like have all six links, having like... 5 links is more than enough. For attack enhances vital strike, with time acceleration, increased duration and enhance effect. For movement abilities it's roll and leap attack with disarm. Shout of justice to remove CC and you want to have buff activation from crown control so it would activate automatically whenever you are CC'd. Shadow Provocation is nice damage and arm amplification, together with Lingering Shout, Hushet Shout, buff activation when hit, so you wouldn't need to press it yourself. Increased duration and enhanced effect. For toggles, for attack seal you can pick up seal of critical chance or seal of condensed destruction. Condensed destruction is gonna be more damage early, but later into the game you're gonna start scaling with crit, so seal of critical chance would be like looking ahead in the future basically. Seal of Elemental Domain for defensive seal, but you can use uh, any defensive seal that you need. You can use Physical Domain, Chaos Resist, Elemental Resist, whatever you need the most. And for Toggle, you can use Enduring Pain, which is nice armor per stack and a little bit of damage when it, when it, when it has full stacks. For Defense Enhance, I would suggest to use Siphon Life with Time Acceleration and Increase Duration. But remember Siphon Life... For the Siphon Life to work really good, you need to have a little bit more HP. It's not gonna work if you're running like 1k or 2k HP, have at least like 4 to 5k to begin with. For Blessings and Charms, you want to start with Hamal, as it's gonna work both for Crescent Slash and Thorn Explosion. Then you have a choice. You can go into Boreal for some melee damage amplification for the Thirst and Slash and Armor Amp. Or you can go for level 4 projectile damage amplification and dodge rate. But either way, you kind of want to have all 3. As it's still going to increase your damage by quite a bit. And for the last one, you can pick up Alyssa for area damage amplification. Basically only for the Thorn Explosion. For the champs themselves, you want to aim for critical rate, critical damage. That would be 2 main mods that you want. And for the third mod, it's kind of depends on you. You can pick up some HPs, you can pick up some resistances, whatever you need the most. Or even you can pick up more damage, like damage multiplier when using two-hander, if you are using two-hander, or just simple damage multiplier. Whatever you can get. For relics, you have a choice. You can start with Boreal, and what you want to pick up is Enhanced Amata Damage and Earth Shock with damage amplification and uh, cooldown recovery speed. This is gonna be good till you hit like 10 mil DPS cause the air check itself at level 35 is gonna do around more than 1 mil DPS by the way. So just keep that in mind. You can either use Boreal or you can use Spica and do the same thing. But Spica doesn't have damage amp on air check, it only has bleed chance. So you're gonna have quite a bit less damage, but the thing is, if you go Spica, you won't need to reroll your Relic, because you can just pick up uh, powerful damage on your passive after you outscale the, basically the Earth Shock. So it's up to you. If you go Boreal, you're gonna have more damage, but you will need to respec, or you start with Spica and just keep it. And for the next one, you want to go for Castor. Basically, Castor is your second one. On this one, you want to basically pick up physical damage amplification and use it as an active. Pick up skill, skill room cooldown recovery speed and then increase buff effect. And if you need 
a little bit more sustain, you can pick up enhanced damage decrease. After you pick up your caster and you start using damage amplification, you want to pick up on this picker one, you want to have this node, powerful damage node as a passive effect. For the third one, you can go Sebda, for example, if you need. And uh, Chaos Resist, this is really nice one. I highly suggest to use this one. And for the fourth one, basically the last one is Boreal. Because the last one can only be level 15, so you're not going to benefit that, that much from passive effects. And getting extra HP is a good idea. So basically, you start with Spick or Boreal, then second Caster, then third Sebda. And you go into the last one, Boreal. For itemization, I'm gonna keep it simple. Basically, what you want for your weapon is a two-handed sword. You can also use axe, but because search and slash scales from equipped weapon range, I highly suggest to go sword. What you want, basically, is the highest critical base on two-handed sword that's possible. And it's actually not 12, it's 13. So look for the sword that has 13 critical rate. This is just an example. On the sword itself, you always want to aim for gear critical rate first, then weapon weapon multiplier, then weapon flat. After that, you roll any flat damage that you using, so it's gonna be physical damage. You can get some weapon range, and then for the last one, you can go for critical damage. It's, it highly depends on your stats and what you have. That crit damage might be even better than weapon attack damage multiplier. And it's only going to depend on how much crit you have. If you have not a single crit, of course it's going to be better. But basically, you aim for gear critical rate. Then you can roll weapon damage multiplier, then crit, then some flat, flat on the weapon, and then weapon range. Weapon range is going to be nice, it's going to help you with the clear. On the neck, basically, you are looking for critical damage implicit neck, and there is not that many choices. You just pick up physical damage and physical damage multiply, and that's all you can do on, on the neck, on non-authority necks. And for other roles, it, it depends on you. You can pick up some HPs, you can pick up whatever resistances you need, or even stats, depending on you. On the chest, it's simple. You aim for armor multiplier, if you are doing armor, then some HPs. And you can pick up some hit rate if you need on the suffix, some chaos res or any res that you need, depending on what on what you're looking for. On the ring, you want to uh, find a attack critical rate implicit ones. On the rings, you can roll a lot of stuff, but I would highly suggest to start with attack critical rates. The difference between critical rate multiplier and attack critical rate multiplier is that attack critical rate has higher values, basically. But both works, by the way. So aim for attack critical rate, for critical damage, those would be the main. Then you can go for attack speed, and you can go for your main element damage. In this case, it's physical damage multiplier. I wouldn't suggest to go for area damage, melee damage, or projectile damage, because it's only gonna work for one of your skills. It's not gonna work for both. That's the main issue. And then resistances or stats, whatever you need. Whatever you can fill it up with. So this would be just like the baseline to what what to look for. So for zodiacs, you want to go something like this. This is one gonna be basically default choice, and some of the nodes gonna be optional. I'm gonna talk about them and when to use them and when don't. So and remember to always use your points on the specializations. So the first spec opens up when you spend 22 points, second spec 45, and third spec, spec 70. So basically you want to start with Afros, bottom nodes, Explorer for some armor and some damage, Gem for some attack speed and damage, then Prella, you can pick up any resistance that you need the most. And if you are mix and matching armor with dodge rate, instead of picking armor in here, you can pick up dodge rate instead. Then Leaf. Again, you can pick up dodge in here. I went for perfect dodge. Perfect dodge, is, is, it's really nice because it's not affected by the map level. It's always going to be 1%. You know, maybe you're going to get lucky. Then the first pack is Dawn. Uh, there is a reason why I'm always going Dawn, even though later nodes are going to be elemental damage. 
It's because it offers you convert mana, which you want to use later into the game when you do green quest in Saluto and you get two extra points in here. But basically you want to aim for, first of all, pick up overpower, or uplift, and then strength damage amplification, and two extra points points spent on convert mana. Don't pick up convert mana early, cause you're gonna die. It leeches your health and converts it into mana. You can solve that by picking up some HP on kill or HP absorb, but about that a little bit later. Then you want to, to pick up contrast. Again, you can go for dodge, it's not a bad idea. If you are doing a little bit of dodge on, on, on the build. Then for Frost for bleed rate and damage against bleeding enemies because Storm Explosion is gonna apply bleed. Namero you can either pick up armor pen or attack speed, whatever you need the most. Float is an optional one, you can pick up all physical damage nodes in here but only later into the game and you're already like level 100 and you no longer need any defensive nodes, you can pick up physical damage in here, it's plenty of physical damage. Convection for some physical damage taking dampening. Then second spec is Hail by default. You want to pick up Tempest, Strike Damage Amplification and then Sharpness. And after you do the quest in Saluto for two extra points, you can go into Attack Critical Rate and Attack Critical Damage. This is not a bad idea. Sand for some Dodge Rate and Damage for two seconds on Critical Hit. This is nice, nice amount. This one is optional, but it's a nice defensive one for some chaos damage dampening and chaos shares and some physical damage. You can either go, you can also go further, pick up even more physical damage dampening and more physical damage. This one is basically optional. If you pick up uh, convert mana early and you don't have any way to sustain yourself, getting HP on kill is gonna be is gonna help you to sustain at least on maps. But this is highly optional one. If you don't pick up Convert Mana, don't pick up this one. Then Maggot is optional one whenever you have 200 Strength, Dexterity and Intelligence. This is a good idea. Every single of these nodes is not gonna be good for you because it's only gonna benefit one of your skill. So for example, you could pick up Strength nodes, pick up Melee Damage for Thirst and Slash, and pick up Area Damage for Thorn Explosion. At the same time, actually projectile damage is also gonna work for Thorn Explosion, so keep that in mind. Plague for a two-hander spec, basically. This is this is a good one. Pharma is if you need more HP. Up to you. Hunter for time of the hunt. It basically can reset your Shandal Provocation cooldown. Blacksmith is optional one. You can pick up some perfect dodge. And this one regens your 5% of max HP whenever you, you perfect dodge. This is not a bad one. Even if you're running zero dodge rate, perfect dodge is a different thing. And if you're not picking any perfect dodge dodges, you can actually go into dodge disabled and pick up a lot of HP. But this is one I don't, I, I, I don't recommend it. Like having just a tiny bit of dodge is gonna improve your survivability by quite a lot. <laughs> and what I like to pick on Hardcore is actually this node. It decreases critical damage taken by 100% so you don't get crit, but it amplifies the damage taken. But I think this node on the Hardcore mode is, ba is basically a must. Then the third spec, as you can see, you have to pick up Elemental Damage node even if you do Physical. But the thing about this one, is that it gives you an option to pick up HP Absorb Limit and HP Absorb on Hit. This is what makes you sustain your HP when you are using Convert Mana. This is basically the combo with Convert Mana. If you pick up this one, you can remove the HP on Kill nodes if you picked up those. Then you can go into Strength Damage Amplification, Attack Speed Amplification. If you don't need Attack Speed, you can pick up HP Amp or just a little bit more damage on Thorn Explosion. And pick up Capable. Capable is nice when you have plenty of stats. And if you think uh, that you don't need Convert Mana, you can just, just spec into Hama. Hama is like really good physical damage spec. Typhoon is for Armor Pen. Basically you want to spend at least 3 points in here, so you could use Zodiac Stone. And, 
At least you're gonna be able to equip like Moon Zodiac Stone, which is still gonna be nice damage increase. Upgrades on the skill board should look something like this. Basically, this is what you're aiming for. But this build has so many choices. I'm gonna try to talk all about all of them, but basically this is what I suggest at least early. So there's some slash. You'll want to awaken it to this is where the fun begins. Basically, the long-term one would be source. So, cause this one is not gonna, you're not gonna cap your ammo pen that fast, and attack speed amp is gonna be nice. Origin, kinda, I wouldn't suggest to go origin. It's like nice amount of damage, but having your attack speed capped at two, it's gonna decrease your procs on the Thorn Explosion also, so I don't suggest this one. Verity, Verity is nice, super early, but remember, you still kinda want to have 100% crit on Thorn Explosion. And if you pick up Verity on Thurston Slash, you're gonna hit 100 really fast, but you're not gonna hit 100 on your Thorn Explosion, so it's kinda gonna be wasted. But if you want early damage, you can awaken it to Verity and then reawaken it to Source later, like much later into the game. For the links, you want to keep additional physical damage, then melee damage amplification. You really want to keep quick attack till you hit 5 attack speed, then fighting spirit for basically defensive side and find weakness for both for Thorn Explosion and Thurston Slash. By the way, you don't have to use additional physical damage if you have enough flat. You can just pick up, for example, Grand Approach for some easy sustain if you need it. Right? This one. Or if you don't scale anymore from the flat damage, you can also pick up Concentrated Weapon Range. But this one is gonna remove your map clear speed for sure, but it's insane amount of damage amplification. This one is nice when you're like going for single target damage, for example in training arena or in raids. For Thorn Explosion, I suggest to go for simple, sim simplest one, so that would be Source. For the links, it's Amplify Physical Projectile Damage, Strike. Considered area damage and mana storm. You can also, instead of using amplify physical projectile, you can use just additional physical damage if you need more flat, depending on your scaling. And later into the game, when you start to hitting like 400, 500 crit values, you can switch fine weakness to mana storm. And instead of using fine weakness, you can add additional physical damage on the thorn explosion. Then it's gonna be basically the most damage you can have. I kept the seal of critical chance in here. It's probably gonna be the best you can do at that point. Cause you want to awaken seal of striking to rapid seal, link it with decreased duration, and just have really nice strike damage amplification buff for maps. At the same time, you want to do decreased duration on your vital strike. Decreased duration is not gonna be damage increase early on the vital strike. It kind of depends on your stats. At some point, doing decreased duration on Vital Strike is so much better than without it. But you have to test that one, it's gonna depend highly on your stats. I kept Pen Slash, but you want to awaken your Pen Slash into extra count Verity basically. Then you can remo remove Roll, but you still want to keep Disarm on that one. Shadow of Justice, nothing new, you want to keep that one. Yeah, basically that would be it on the upgrades. There's still so much stuff you can do, but I don't want to like make it 20 minutes long, but this is basically like an optimal setup. This is what I suggest. Just remember that you want to keep your attack speed close to 5 and only then remove quick attack and you can remove additional physical damage for grand approach if you need more sustain. Everything else is really good. So this would be everything that I want to say. I kind of talked a lot on this one, but I also wanted to for people to understand that there is like many ways to do the build and you kind of want to change your build depending on the situation. So yeah, have a nice one. Don't forget to stack equip weapon range because that's going to increase your clear. And yeah, have a blast with this one.
Have a blast. GG's and see you on the next one.